From beings that look like firefighters to a quantum leap correction, here's what you missed last week on my TikTok. Whoops. What's up, glitches? I'm Antimatrix, and people send me their weird, unexplainable, true stories to this email address, and I share those with you. I have thousands of unread emails in my inbox detailing people's true personal experiences with glitches in the matrix, aliens, and the paranormal. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. We also hang out and read stories live here on YouTube and on TikTok. Grab some Anti-Matrix merch and check out all my links at tessicavision.com and join us in Discord to hang out with like-minded people and get announcements from me. Sit back, grab a comfort item to squeeze, and let's get weird. This person sent me a story called Henry and the Smoking Man in My House, which we're gonna read right now. What's up, glitches? I'm Anti Matrix, and people send me their weird, unexplainable, true stories to this email address, and I share those with you. This is number 247. Let's get weird. Hi, Auntie. Hi. I've been binge watching your videos for the past few days, and I wanna share one of my own. This is a pretty long one, so I'm sorry in advance. Never apologize for the long ones. Last year, I was going through a rough time mentally. I was 16, and I live in a Victorian terraced house in North England. My parents and two of my siblings had gone on holiday slash vacation without me because when they had booked the holiday, I was in a relationship and didn't want to be separated from my partner. The relationship ended and I was in a really dark space and couldn't sleep. I was really sad and alone. One night I was making myself some dinner in our kitchen, which is connected to the oldest and the only part of the house that hasn't been refurbished. It's where the corridor that used to lead to the servants' quarters was. Servants' quarters? I suddenly felt like I was being watched and I had chills and goosebumps run up the back of my neck. I turned around very quickly and dropped the spoon I was using to stir my pasta. I saw very clearly a grubby looking young boy around 10 to 12 years old wearing a gray suit with rolled up white sleeves and a flat cap. He was smiling at me with a sad, dry smile and had his head tilted at me. I was extremely scared and I had an inclination that he was watching over me and didn't want me to be alone. Oh, that's interesting to me that you were scared, but at the same time, you felt like he was there to keep you company. I phoned my family that night and told my mother what I had seen. She reported that my little sister, who was 11 at the time, had also seen a little boy when we had moved into the house two years prior when she was sad and she named him Henry. I was really freaked out and said aloud, I'm sorry, Henry, but I'd really like it if you didn't show yourself to me anymore because I'm quite scared. After I said that, I didn't particularly see Henry again, except I did hear him. That might be scarier. <laughs> One day I had gotten home from college early a few months after I had seen him. My little sister and my younger brother were both at school and my mom and dad were out of the house shopping. I remember clearly that I locked my bedroom door and fell asleep for a nap. I felt a breeze on my face and I was in that kind of state where you're half awake and half asleep. I propped my head up on the pillow really confused. I then noticed that my bedroom door was pushed slightly ajar and I didn't see anyone. I hear a whisper from a young boy's voice say, she's still sleeping and a little giggle. I shot right up and I said once again, Henry, please leave me alone. I'm not comfortable. I have not seen or heard from Henry since. However, our downstairs dining room is very large and has very high ceilings with the fireplace. And next to the fireplace, there's a really old armchair that came with the house when my parents first bought it. My siblings and I have always told our parents that we smell smoke coming from that chair. And it is definitely not from the fireplace because it's never lit. One day, one of my friends came over, stepped a foot through the dining room door and said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know your dad was here. What? He's not. I replied, really confused, and her face went absolutely paper white and she felt sick. There's a man smoking a pipe sitting in that chair, she said. I looked and I didn't see him at all. I told her she's probably seen a ghost. The other night, whilst I was watching and listening to your creepy glitch in the Matrix videos, I was feeling pretty disturbed and I just put it down to them being creep. However, I felt the earring feeling like I was being watched again and I shone the light of my phone to an armchair in my room. There I see an old, overweight man in a suit with hardly any hair and a pipe in his hand smiling at me. I feel as though spirits in my house only come and show themselves to us when we are sad or mentally struggling, which is partly comforting, so I was wondering your opinions on them. Thank you so much for reading all of that. So it's my understanding from all the stories and stuff that I've read that if you are in a really bad mental place that you are more likely to get like beings and entities like attached to you. But this seems to be a different scenario because although you are scared because you're seeing a ghost, essentially, you also feel like when you're seeing the ghost, you are, you guys are sad. And when you're seeing them, it's like they're there to comfort you. I wonder if the old smoking man is related to the boy. Like, is that the boy's father, the boy's grandfather? I wonder why they're like tethered to that house like did something happen in that house comments opinions please
This person sent me two stories, one about a UFO sighting and one about a mimic, and we are going to read them right now. What's up, glitches? I'm Antimatrix, and people sent me their weird, unexplainable, true stories to this email address, and then I share those with you. This is number 248. Let's get weird. Hi, Antimatrix. Hi! Back in 2010, September 10th to 11th to be exact, I was driving home at around 2 to 3 a.m. from my friend's house. This was my senior year at high school. I had the window down, not a care in the world, listening to Hey Soul Sister on the radio. Hey Soul Sister. It's a great My house was in the suburbs, so I was pulling into my neighborhood. I stopped at the stop sign I have to turn right at to get to the street my street is off of. And 50 feet above the house on the corner across the street were these huge, moving, glowing, Orbs. I stayed at the stop sign completely confused as to what I was seeing. I was racking my brain like, is this a plane? No, can't be. Government testing? But I couldn't fathom how what I was seeing could be a human made. The ladies option was UFO. The ladies option? Is that, a, is that a saying that I don't know? Once I realized I was horrified and sped 75 miles an hour on a 25 mile an hour road a quarter mile to my house, ran inside and woke up my dad. I forced him to come out into the backyard with me because that's the direction I saw it and it was gone. UFOs move fast, man. Then he was like, wait a minute, your sister said she saw something in the sky out the living room window earlier. Why don't you go ask her? The living room window was the exact same direction where I saw it. I ran to wake her up and without telling her what I saw, she explained exactly what I saw. She said, she saw these huge orange orbs that were moving in geometric patterns and would sway and get bigger and smaller and others would suddenly appear and disappear. When I was at the stop sign, I stared for so long trying to see if there was a body of a plane or something I wasn't seeing. This was only 50 feet above the house. There was nothing but the orbs. So that same night, about an hour later, I had the window of my room open and it was right next to where I sit on my bed and I heard this completely inhuman sound. Sort of like the sounds the aliens in the movie Signs make and heard it moving in the grass right outside my window. I jumped out of bed and into the hallway screaming, woke everyone up in the house for a second time that night, and I was on the floor of the hallway bawling my eyes out. I was so terrified. My parents checked my room and looked out the yard and couldn't see anything, but my sister completely believed me because of what she saw earlier. My parents thought I must have just been jumpy because of what I saw earlier, but I wasn't at all. I knew what I heard, and it put me straight into fight or flight. I can't even describe the sound, but can still hear it in my head. Oh my god. The next day at school, I told all my friends what I saw, and they were like, yeah, okay, Caroline. We believe you. I did research when I got home later, and it turns out that there was actually a name for what I saw. The Tinley Lights. Turns out my town had millions of sightings of UFOs going back decades. Tinley Park, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. Within that year, two separate people I told the story to called me as they were seeing the same thing and couldn't believe it was real. And I found out two other people from my class had also had the experience around the same area slash neighborhood that they also believed was a UFO. Haven't seen anything like it since, and I'm very skeptical person, so I always question my memory, and I wonder if maybe there was a different explanation, but when I go over it in my head, I know there wasn't. This is actually crazy because on uh, the YouTube live that we did last night, uh, a girl came on and she actually was talking about this exact situation where she saw an orb, but it turned out to be a craft. She even had a picture that was like zoomed in by a professional and you could like see the pilot. It was really cool. If you missed that and you want to check it out, it's on my YouTube page. It's the, it's the YouTube live recording from November 21st. I'm trying to remember what the aliens in signs sound like. Alexa, what do the aliens in signs sound like? From LATimes.com. To create the voices of the aliens, known as heptapods, sound designers Dave Whitehead and Michelle Child blended various sounds including birds, camels, pigs, and a Maori flute. That's interesting. Oh my god, but can you imagine hearing that in the middle of the night and like rustling outside your window and those fucking sounds after seeing the orbs and the... Mm. Nope, no wonder you're freaking terrified. And I feel like there's just some towns, like some places where there's so much alien activity. Is anybody from Tinley Park, Illinois that's watching that has had anything happen to them? Tell me in the comments. Okay, on to the mimic story. This story happened in the same house. I woke up one day and went to the living room to watch TV. Had no idea I was home alone. It was cold and rainy and I was just relaxing in my PJs watching TV when I heard my sister's blood curdling scream coming from the basement. Oh my God, I have chills, like immediate chills. Her and her boyfriend used to live down there. It was finished. Okay, all right. That's not like as scary, but it's still scary. My first thought was that she was being unalived. What? 
I ran to the basement door and opened it and the second I did, I realized right away that no one was down there. It went dead silent and you could just sense when someone was down there. The second I realized they weren't down there, my stomach dropped and I ran outside in the rain in my socks. Oh my God, can you imagine? First, your stomach drops because your sister is screaming a blood curdling, terrifying scream and you think that she's being unalived in the basement and then you realize she's not home and then it drops all the way down. My cell phone was in my room upstairs and this is when I realized that no one was home. I stood out there for 15 minutes watching through my window waiting for someone or something to pop out but nothing ever did. So I finally got the courage to run to get my phone and then ran straight back outside. I called my mom and she was 10 minutes away grocery shopping and she said she'd be home ASAP because I refused to go back in alone. She told me my sister and her boyfriend were in pencil. Vania, nowhere near our home. There were no TVs on in my house besides the loud one I was watching and the scream was loud and for sure came from the basement. We bought our house new, but my sister and her friends used to play with Ouija boards all the time at the cemetery and in our house. Well, no wonder why. She also has many stories of hearing our voices or her boyfriend's voice call her when no one was there. Her boyfriend also experienced this multiple times in that house. They had actually mentioned it before, but I didn't believe them. I figured since they like creepy stuff, a lot that they were scaring themselves, but I'm 100% sure about what I heard because otherwise I wouldn't have run to the basement stairs to help if I had thought it was anything else. Once again, my brain always wants me to come up with a rational reason for what I experienced, but I can't think of a single thing in my house that it could have been besides a mimic. And my house has wood floors, so it echoed a lot. So I know the sound came from inside. The sound is coming from inside the house. Oh my God, man. Mimics like that shit. That shit scares me. Oh my God, can you imagine? I'm sure a lot of you can't imagine. Luckily I can't, luckily I can't. I mean, I can imagine, but luckily I don't have the experience. I haven't had the experience. Knock on wood. 100% I believe you. Did you ever hear it again? That's one question. How are you still living in that house? And like, if you are like, how? Thank you so much for sharing your stories. These were wonderful. I wanna hear your opinions in the comments. Follow me everywhere for more stories and content like this. And remember, we believe you. I met the aliens last, last night on the moon. The full moon. You met the aliens last night on the moon? Yeah, the full moon. And it looked like a circle. Okay. And what did they, what did the aliens look like? Yeah, they look like people. They look to like people, but a lot smaller than people. And then there was the guard. The guard? And what did the guard look like? It looked like... It looked like this. Like a circle? No, it looked like... It looked like this. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. Is that a diamond? And, and the other aliens are triangle heads. They have triangle heads. The others have triangle heads. The others have circle heads. And the others have... And the others have... Diamond heads. The guard has a diamond head because it's little, like this little. Okay. Like this large. And how did you get to the moon to meet the aliens? With a rocket. <laughs> With a rocket? Why wasn't I invited? You were invited. All of you were invited. Okay. Even Daddy was invited and little Michael was invited. And you have to wear... Uh, and you have to, to wear uh, space suits. <laughs> okay. You guys tagged me in another spooky Susie stitch. Call me crazy if you want. Susie, I don't want to call you crazy. I don't feel like that's a nice thing to say, especially when I've had really weird things that could be considered crazy um, happen to me. For instance, um, in the year 2000, uh, I was a single mother. I had a little three-year-old daughter, 
and we had moved into our very own first little home and uh, we had strange occurrences like start happening. Um, every uh, cabinet in the kitchen would be opened. I would go in there, they'd all be opened. Um, there'd be a strange puddle in the middle of the floor. Nothing was leaking, nothing was had fallen, nothing had dripped. It was the weirdest thing. So one day I'm sitting down on the couch and I'm facing um, like the a sliding glass door was over to my left hand side and you could see the reflection of the whole entire uh, hallway that was you know kind of behind me and I was sitting there facing the sliding glass door and I see a reflection and it looks like a little boy preteen um, had a big baggy like a, a, a shirt that was too big for him um, and overalls that were tight at the bottom which I found super weird and a shaved head now let me just say this image stayed stuck in my brain like permanently and I was freaking out my heart's like thumping out of my chest and as I'm like freaking out my daughter um, burst out of her bedroom which was right there in the hallway scares the crap out of me and she's like she's like mom 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 she's super excited and she's like my sister she's coming she's she's coming she's finally coming and I was like what I was like oh, oh okay okay you know I'm like trying to soothe her and calm her down and super weird because she always slept throughout the night uh fast forward a couple of weeks go by I think like not, I don't think it was even a month, um, but a couple of weeks go by and I find out that I'm pregnant. I end up having my daughter, um, Pumpkin. She was adorable and she, out of nowhere, when she was teeny tiny, she goes, I used to come and mess with you and my sister. I used to come and open up all the cabinets to scare you. S super weird. Like, I don't think I had ever told the story um, at that point. And she was teeny tiny. Most kids end up forgetting about things like that, but not her. She ended up holding true to that story. I, I think she was like 17. I was just like, I'm telling you, it was me. I used to come haunt you. Like, just laughing about it. I'm like, stop joking around like that. Like, that scares me. Oh, and by the way, when I got pregnant with her, the... All the weird stuff completely stopped like it just completely stopped and um anyway fast forward to uh 2019 january 2019 and i'm packing up all my stuff she and i were moving um because my husband and i were getting married and i had this thing with like i i don't like things around my neck uh I don't like necklaces, anything too tight, turtlenecks, nothing around my neck, right? And she had this scarf that she had been gifted, which I just, I could not explain why, but I despised, despised this scarf. Completely irrational, like loathing, whoa, loathing for um, this scarf. Anyway, I thought she had gotten rid of it. I was like super excited about it. I do not like that light. Um, and we had kind of ran out of time like to pack everything. I'm like, it's getting late. I'm tired. Let's go grab some pizza and we'll come back and finish. And she was kind of sad that we were moving and I was trying to be understanding. I'm like, of course, you know, she's like, can I just stay here? And I was like, sure, honey, we'll just grab you some pizza. And uh, we go eat. I come back and I have this habit of... Um, taking off my clothes and uh, changing into my pajamas. Anytime that I'm home, I'm wearing pajamas. Um, so I go into the bathroom where I had left my pants and I kind of see her out of my peripheral vision. Like I saw that she was in the bathroom and I'm like, honey, have you seen my pants? And I look over and she's like standing on a 
the we had like a garden tub and she it looked like she was standing on the garden tub and I look I'm like honey you're scaring me and she wasn't moving and I I walked around and I, I saw her face and I could see um, she had that scarf that I hated um, she had unalived herself and uh, of course I freak out and I, um, I go to like grab her and I looked around and every cabinet in the bathroom was open because we had been packing and when I went to go grab her I stepped in a puddle of water and that just freaked me out I was like because I knew that she had passed because there was a puddle of water on the ground fast forward to um, after her funeral after everything after I had moved I was uh, going through the post and like um, you know the things the really sweet things that her friends had made and posted about her and one of the pictures uh, she was wearing the outfit that she had passed in <sighs> and it was a it was a black t-shirt that was too big for her she had shaved her head and she was wearing overalls that were fitted at the bottom like it was her like beyond a shadow of a doubt it was her that I had seen it was her that I had seen in the hallway all those years ago I don't know what that means I I don't know what it means and I have racked my brain like I've heard the theory of you know time is a big circle whatever I, I, don't, I, I don't know what it means um, but yeah but after that I can't call anyone crazy but I also Hey, store-bought pesto. Oh my god. I am so sorry for your loss. That is a crazy, terribly sad story. Obviously, time is not linear, and what's getting me is that she looked that way when you saw her originally, before she was even born. Um, because in my brain, a spirit can take on whatever form of themselves. Um, when they show themselves to like a human, right? So I wonder clearly, you know, and when we're on the other side, I also believe that we know all the things, right? And we sign up for the things. So um, I'm thinking that she knew what her life was going to be. And she popped in, but looking like she did later, like to say hi to you, to see you, and to have your, you know, your sister be excited for her sister coming. Um, I don't know if that's maybe something that you need. And maybe if she hadn't done that and you hadn't made this connection, maybe it would be a lot harder for you. Maybe this is something that you personally need, like you needed that. And that's why she did that. Whether that's right or not, I don't know. Um, that's just my take on it. But I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss. Thank you so much for sharing your story with people. Um, I feel like it does really help. Stories like this really help people to know that we're not just this humanly earthly existence and we don't just vanish into nothingness when we die here, when we move on. Thank you guys for tagging me. That was a really good one. This person sent me a story called Firefighters in My Room and I had to check it out, so we're gonna read it right now. What's up, glitches? I'm Auntie Matrix and people send me their weird, unexplainable, true stories to this email address and I share those with you. This is number 249, let's get weird. Hey, Auntie, hi! I just wanted to share a wild experience I had about 10 years ago when I was a freshman in college. 
I was living in the dorms with a roommate I didn't know very well. We had one large room that we shared, so the room was split in half, a bed on each side, desks on each side, etc. In the middle of the room was my large futon that was a focal point. The room was overall well kept and tight, so one night I go to bed like normal. After a while, I wake up sitting on the futon. Something feels odd, and I notice that everything is in slow motion. My body feels light, but it takes forever for me to move my hand in front of my face and to take a look at it. I slowly look to my right and see my roommate is asleep in her bed. Slowly, slowly, my head turns to the left, and I see my own body sleeping in my bed. I come to realize this must be a dream, but it was so vivid and so realistic. I remember it in perfect detail to this day, down to the specks of dust floating in slow motion in the air and the bluish light coming from a light outside. I'm just sitting there cross-legged and overcome with a sense of peace and contentment. Suddenly, in a blink, I'm no longer sitting on the futon. I'm floating in the furthest corner of the room near the door. I still see our sleeping bodies in bed unmoving. Out of nowhere, two beings appear in my room. I can only describe these two beings as looking like firefighters, but they weren't human. They wore these big heavy jackets or suits that covered their entire bodies, sort of like a firefighter would, but they didn't actually have heads. They had some sort of head-like appendage, but it wasn't sitting on top of a neck on their shoulders like a human's would. It was sunken into their body, so they were almost square. They definitely had equipment with them, but it was equipment I had never seen before and couldn't understand. They had this authoritative air about them. They had a task and it was urgent. They didn't speak to each other, but they were in communication somehow. Telepathy, maybe? BT dubs, I think you're definitely astral projecting. I wasn't afraid of them, but I knew if they saw me, they would kill me. I just knew it. So I floated in the corner and I watched, but I did not make a sound. The beings moved through our room. They opened drawers, took out papers, opened and closed laptops. One stopped at my sleeping body and touched my hair. No, no, that's so creepy. The other stopped to look at my roommate. They weren't interested in us at all, but they felt something for us. Was it pity, disgust, or brief appreciation? I have no idea, but they were gentle and acknowledged our presence in a different way than they handled the objects in the room. They moved through the room and looked through our closets and drawers, but they definitely had paid more attention to the desks at the other side of the room. I don't remember how or when they left. All I remember is that they never did see me floating and watching them. That was the extent of the dream. I woke up to my roommate feeling very frustrated. Did you go through my stuff last night? She asked me. <gasps> Duh. I looked around and her desk had clearly been rifled through, so had her clothes and her makeup. I looked at my desk, papers were taken out of drawers, pictures off the walls, the chair was pulled out from the desk and left askew. Someone had been in our room that night. Thanks for reading, happy holiday. Okay, number one, I think you're astral projecting. Number two, what were those beings have never heard of anything like that in my entire life. What were they looking for? Like, is your roommate doing some sketchy stuff? Does your roommate have some secrets? I feel like your roommate, if you don't have some secrets, I feel like your roommate has some secrets. Did this ever happen again? Did you tell your roommate about this, like, dream that you had with the things? I have so many questions. Thank you for sharing. Follow me everywhere for more stories and content like this. And remember, we believe you. What is going on with these celebrities? Oh, what is happening in this video? You just see Rose completely still. No blinks, no movement whatsoever. It doesn't seem like he needs to say that still for them to adjust his equipment. And you got this lady over here to the right that seems like she realizes somebody's recording this and then like slowly turns away from the camera. What the hell is happening with these celebrities lately? Like we've seen the same thing with Shaq where he just freezes on screen. Almost like there's some sort of MK Ultra sh going down. I don't know. It's this is just weird. I mean, you're not a karaoke guy like me, but you can ask. Oh, uh, you know they call me old brown eyes, right? <laughs> as a matter of fact, okay. as a matter of fact, uh, you both have experience singing New York, New York. His was uh, at the slam dunk contest. Yours was in Vegas. Yes. We had the show out there. Here's just a little sampling. See, I love to do karaoke. That's good, isn't it? You see those two mics back there? You made up your own words. You see those Wait, that was the words? Hey. In old New York? I know, Hollywood's fucking weird, right? And evil and what the fuck ever. What is happening here? Are we taking all of our celebrities and 
killing them off and then making clones of them, robot AI clones, and then putting those out there to do whatever we want them to. Is that what's happening? Like, is that what's happening? Or are these celebrities like signing off and saying like, hey, I don't want to be a celebrity anymore, but I still want money. So make a clone AI of me to be the celebrity and like, let me go off somewhere and live a private life. Is that maybe what's happening? And why are they allowing these clips? Like, why are they allowing these clips out there? If these are robots, right? If these are robots, which I mean, they kind of look like they are. If these are like AI celebrity robots and they've been recorded, why are they allowing these? Why are they allowing them to be recorded? Why are they allowing the clips to get out there? Why are they not taking these down? It's like to hide it. They're not even, are we not even trying to hide it? Are we just done trying to hide stuff? Are we just like, hey, this is what it is now. What is going on? This person sent me a story called Three Lives in One Death and Quantum Leap Correction, which we have to read right now. What's up, glitches? I'm Anti Matrix, and people send me their weird, unexplainable, true stories to this email address, and I share those with you. This is number 250. Let's get weird. Follow me everywhere for more content like this, and remember, we believe you. Hi, Anti Matrix. Hi. I love your page and content. When I came across your page, I watched most of your videos in one night, except the really scary ones. I left those until the morning. Then, of course, I told my family, friends, and now they're following your page too. Thank you. I love how your videos connect all of us with our strange, unimaginable encounters and glitches up stories it's true and it's real you watch all my stuff in one night like that's a I, can you even do that it's a lot <laughs> this is a long and detailed one to explain properly it's not a glitch but it's pretty trippy so here goes i know you like long stories get your popcorn bowl ready this started with me having a dream journey one night we know the dreams are not just dreams my dream journey was that i was looking for a house to move into and i was somewhere along a mountainside that had beautiful greenery i kept driving on this dirt road because there were a few houses that had the for sale sign in front of them as i drove past this one house it looked somewhat familiar to me and since i had a for sale sign i decided to check it out. I parked my car and when I looked back at the car design, I felt I was in an older timeline. From the model of the car, it felt like it was the 60s. I proceeded to walk into the house and as soon as I entered it, I felt this huge deja vu gut feeling that I've been in this house before. Everything seemed so familiar. To describe the house, when I entered it, I saw that there was a mirror table to my left. Further down the left was a kitchen. Even though I could not see it was the kitchen from where I was standing, I just knew it was the kitchen. In front of me was a staircase to go to the bedrooms and on my right was a huge dining room area with a large patio. I walked to the mirror on my left and it was covered in dust. I wiped it down and I saw my reflection. I saw that I did not look like me, me the dreamer. I was still a woman, but I looked different, lighter hair, lighter eyes, but looking into my eyes, her eyes, I still knew it was me, the dreamer. And from the way I was dressed on my hairstyle, it was definitely the 60s. I went to look into the living room and there was barely any furniture and the couch that was there was covered in white cloth. There was dust everywhere and cobwebs on the chandelier. It was obvious no one had lived there for years. As I'm taking a panoramic view of the living room, all of a sudden the room flashes right in front of my eyes and as I look again, I am now standing in the same living room except that it is completely furnished and no cloth on the couch, everything in place, chandelier lights on, no cobwebs, and it was filled with people. I was in the middle of a soiree. Why I say soiree is because the way that everyone was dressed, there were women dancing with knee-length fringe dresses, headbands that had jewelry or feathers on them. The men were in suits and sweater vests with hats on. The men were smoking cigars. The women had these long sticks for their cigarettes. It was the 1920s. People were laughing, drinking, dancing, and music was playing, but the whole vision lasted about seven seconds before I was flashed back to the same dusty, empty house I was in. I remember feeling very confused, more so because this party felt familiar too. I continued to go upstairs and there were two bedrooms, one on the left and one on the right, and in the center was an open space leading to a balcony. Again, I felt I've been in this house before. Without hesitation, I was drawn to the room on the left. As I opened the door to have a look inside, I opened the door to the 1920s timeline of that bedroom. There was a woman sitting in front of her table mirror, so her back was to me, but since she was facing the mirror, I could see her face clearly. She was putting on red lipstick. Her dark hair was bejeweled and curled upwards in a gold headband. I remember feeling that she looked so elegant. Then she stops and looks straight at me through the mirror. Frozen in this moment with her looking at me, I have no words to explain it. I felt it again as a deja vu gut feeling that I know this woman. I felt every cell in my body vibrate as I started to remember. Not only do I know this woman, I was this woman in that life too. I was startled and I closed the door back to the dusty, empty house, trying to process everything that I knew this house. I knew her. I am her. Lived there. This was my house in the 1920s and this was my 
party. What does it all mean? Before I can fully comprehend, she opens the bedroom door and I'm back in the 1920s. She passes me, but this time she does not see me. She goes down the stairs, so I follow her. As she gets to the center of the staircase, everyone turns to cheer her on and with a loving smile, she says, this calls for more champagne and more wine. Everyone cheers on even more. Now I realize that I'm no longer in a flash of that timeline. I am completely in it as an observer watching her, me, through the event. This is so cool. She goes to the kitchen and I follow her again. She tells the waiters to go around with their trays to serve more champagne and wine glasses to the guests. She joins her party, laughing with her guests and dancing. A few moments later, her two best friends who were a married couple, let's call them Charles and Helen, they came up to her and told her, we're out of wine and that she will need to go get more from the cellar, which was from the back end of the kitchen. She goes to the end of the kitchen and opens the cellar door. The cellar door was the type that you can only open from the outside and not from the inside, so she placed a rock on the floor to keep the cellar door open and went down the stairs to get more wine. I don't like that. <laughs> Again, I followed her just observing. She picks up a few bottles and after a while I notice and so does she that she is coughing and having difficulty breathing. She leaves the bottles behind and goes back up the stairs to catch her breath. When she gets to the top, the rock that was holding the door open had been removed and the door was closed shut. She kept knocking and knocking but from the sound of the party and the music, no one could hear her. Her breathing starts to become heavier and slower. She drops to the floor and can barely knock on the door anymore. I was frozen watching her. I didn't understand what was happening to her and I could not do anything about it. She she couldn't breathe anymore. I slowly watched her die and I watched myself die. Oh my God, it's not over yet. Right when she died, I flashed back and rewinded in time to the exact moment she was standing in center of the stairs saying, this calls for more champagne and more wine. Only now I am no longer watching as the observer. I am her looking through her eyes, looking at the guests. I have become the 1920s version of me I was seeing in flashbacks. And I heard my own voice say, this calls for more champagne and more wine. Afterwards, I knew I was going to the kitchen to tell the waiters to prepare the champagne and wine glasses. So that's exactly what I did. I started to walk towards my guests and then I remembered the cellar and that I will need to get more wine from there. It almost felt like me going down there was written and that was my fate to do so. I could not explain it nor did I want to change it. I just knew it had to be so. The only difference was this time I did not wait for my two best friends Charles and Helen to tell me that we needed more wine from the cellar. I just went. When I got to the cellar door I saw that it was already open with a rock holding the door in place. I went inside, moved the rock out of place, and let the door close behind me. As I started to go down the stairs, I heard voices coming from inside the cellar. I went down a little more to take a closer look, and I saw Charles and Helen there. What is happening? They were pouring some kind of poison all over the cellar while covering their airways. Helen was saying, that's enough. Let's go before we get poisoned too. Only then did they turn around and see me standing there. Oh my God, I have chills. They both looked like they saw a ghost. That's when I understood that when I was observing my previous death, I was observing my murder. My supposed two best friends, Charles and Helen, had poisoned the cellar with the intention of killing me and they did. But in this rewrite, resetting of timeline or quantum leap correction, I did not wait for them to tell me to go to the cellar. Therefore, I went down ahead of schedule and I caught them in the act. But by doing so also, I unintentionally locked them in the cellar with me where we all inevitably choked and died together from the poison. When I was taking my last breath yet again, I jumped back into the timeline of the woman in the 60s in the dusty, empty house. She slash me was also trying to catch her breath while I jumped back into me, the dreamer. I too jumped from my sleep, barely catching my breath. My dreams have always shown me messages and understandings of many elements, but this by far was one of the most detailed about one of my previous lives. Not just one life, but three in one. That death was so profound that I was called to that house again in the 60s, as well as current me. In both lives, I did not know that it was my friends that intended on killing me. The only difference is in one, I died not knowing. In the other, the last moment I found out it was them, but their karmic fate was sealed too. As we know, time is linear. So the question that baffles me to this day is, did both timelines happen simultaneously? One, where I was murdered alone and two, where I locked my murderers with me in the grand scheme of this multiverse? Or did I quantum leap in the 20s after witnessing the truth in the 60s and change the ending? This whole experience plus many others that followed started my journey down the rabbit hole and understood Understanding the mysteries and the untold truth of the world that we live in. What I love about your page too is that it's opening people's eyes to question what is the real truth in this universe and we're here for it. It's not conspiracy theorists, it's truthists in a wild, wild world. I love that. 
Love you, Anti-Matrix. Keep growing and shining. The Starlight Ninja. Okay, this went like I was not expecting it to go this way. I was not expecting you to go back and then find your killers in the basement and then lock them in there with you unintentionally. I honestly have the same questions. I don't know. I, time is not linear. I mean, we experience time linear, linearly, but it's not. Time doesn't exist, right? Time, it's not. So they could have all happened at the same time. I mean, everything is kind of all happening at the same time. But yeah, that's my question. Like, did you go back and change the ending yourself? Like, were you supposed to do that for some for some reason? Oh my God, guys, I, do, I am not sure. I really wanna hear everyone's, everyone's thoughts in the comments. Please, please, please. Thank you so much for sharing. This person sent me a story about seeing a skinwalker up close and we're gonna read that right now. What's up glitches, I'm Anti Matrix, and people send me their weird, unexplainable, true stories to this email address and I share those with you. This is number 251, let's get weird. Follow me everywhere for more content like this and remember, we believe you. This experience happened in 2016 but I cannot get it out of my mind. My friend and I had just moved to Morristown, Ohio, I think I said that right. And being teenagers, we decided to explore the village. We decided late one night to go visit the cemetery. Now having no idea where that might be, we Google GPS it on my friend's phone. So we're walking on the road to the cemetery. Now keep in mind, this is out in the country. Well, I'd noticed a truck slowly coming towards us, which freaked us out. So in hopes that they wouldn't see where we went, we hid in a nearby ditch, which was actually right in front of the gates of the cemetery. And we had no clue because GPS told us different. How old were you? Please tell me that you were older and not some like, super young teenage girls walking around at night around a cemetery with creepy trucks coming by. I'm just concerned as a mother. So the truck pulls up to us and it's an old couple who actually lived right beside the cemetery and I swear it was just like in a creepy movie where they warn you to go back before it's too late. What? They said it was too late for us to be out and to go home and of course we didn't listen. We acted like our house was in the direction we were already headed. So we're still going down this country road and all of a sudden my friend's phone says you have reached your destination and shuts off. Keep in mind it was fully charged before leaving. Turn around now. So I turn my flashlight on and we just keep walking forward in hopes that we come across it. Well, we pass a windmill and right up ahead are shrubs and trees and we get about 10 feet from the shrubs where we saw this huge hunched over creature hunched over. It was way taller than me being 5'9 with no facial features and a broken chain around its neck. No. Oh. It's like that scary movie too. I had the flashlight pointed directly at it and there's no way we could have mistaken this for any animal. And as we froze in shock, it screamed at us and we bolted. At the time I had never heard of skinwalkers and wouldn't have believed people if they told me before I saw what I saw. So we get home and a few days later before a doctor appointment, my phone disappeared. Now I have scissors, so I threw a fit knowing one of them had to have taken it. Well, after two days, my friend found it behind the couch. So I have my phone for two days and then my whole family decides we're going to go on a haunted attraction and my phone was dead. Anyhow, so I wanted to test something out. I left my phone in the middle of the island in the kitchen and was the last to leave and lock the door and then come back. I was the first one in and my heart sank as I got to the kitchen and my phone was gone. I was in such disbelief. It was gone again. This time I was certain my sisters were not pranking me. So two days passed and I kept getting a feeling it might be in the pantry. So I give it a look, but no luck. Then 10 minutes pass and my friend asks, have you checked the pantry? So we decided to check again, no luck. A few hours later, my boyfriend comes over and asks immediately if I'd checked the pantry. Now I was really spooked. So I check one more time, this time doing a really thorough check and really far back on the floor under some boxes. I found it all the way under some boxes back on the floor. How did it, how did it get there? So me and my boyfriend go upstairs to watch a movie and he asks me to get him some pizza. So I go downstairs and one of the knives that usually hangs on a magnet strip on the wall was clear across the room on the stairs. It's 2023 now and my sister and friend who were downstairs still to this day deny messing with that knife. Two days later, me and my friend are in our room and all of a sudden her phone would not work. Half the screen went black and keep in mind, we were just sitting there so she didn't drop it or anything. Then after being freaked out, I checked my phone broken too. We had to get new phones and after that, all the weird stuff stopped. Also about a year ago when I posted about it, a guy from that town confirmed that he recurringly saw these things and would hide his stuff. Which after I watched a show on these creatures makes sense that they'd hide people's stuff because I guess they're known as tricksters. And when I look online to find out who owns the land to see if they had any experiences there, I found out it's government owns. I know I should leave it alone and forget all this, but I feel like I have to see one just once more. My brain still has trouble processing all of this. They sent this like Google Maps uh, picture too. So old couple's house that stopped us is up in the red. Then the blue is ditch where we hid on the side of the cemetery. And then down here where Haley's phone died, 
where we saw it, where the skinwalker was. Wait a second. Like, you guys walk. You were walking, right? Because, like, I feel like this is really far to walk. The old couple's house is up here that stopped you. Then that's where you hid. And then you walked all the way down here. The phone died there. And then you saw the skinwalker there. I feel like that's a long walk. I've personally never heard of skinwalkers stealing stuff. I don't... It could be a thing, and I just don't know. Have you guys ever heard of that before? Also, what a creepy freaking! It was hunched over, and the chain. What was with the chain? What was with the chain? And then the scream, and then the phone, and then the, and then and then your phones. Like what happened? I don't understand. Did something get attached to your phone? Like I'm a, like a little bit confused by this story, but I wish you got a picture of that. Cre Did you get a picture of that creature? Did you guys like video or take a picture or something with your phone? Is that why your phones got fucked up and stopped working? Like I don't. I have, so, I have questions. What do you guys think in the comments, in the comments? Thank you for sharing. That concludes our creepy compilation for today. If you wanna keep it going, you can check out this video or this playlist.